we have a cantilever beam and we have a point load here because of point load the beam will be deflected like this initially it was horizontal and then we have a deflection so we want to know what is the value of deflection here that equals to delta max and in a simply supported beam if we have a load here then this value will be equals to maximum value of so we are interested what is the value of delta that is a deflection at the same time we are interested what is the value of slope of this elastic curve either at this point or either at this point or either at this point the slope at this point is zero so this value will be called as theta a this is point b then this value will be called as theta b and this value with the horizontal made will be called as theta a so we want to develop the relation for delta theta force whatever the load it may have either udl this curve is called as elastic curve till now we have the knowledge of bending we have bending equation is that is a flexor equation is m by i is equal to sigma b by y and e by r where r is called as radius of curvature so this is the basically radius of curvature here we can find here this is the radius of curvature is somewhere is called as radius of curvature so this term is basically r and if we show somewhere here so that will be called as radius of curvature so can we write here r equals to this r equals to ei multiplied divided by m so the radius of curvature that how much it will going to deflect like this is entirely depend on three property one is e one is i and one is m if your value of e and i is very very high then what are the value of m it may be there r is very very low so deflection will be lower lower the deflection better will be the condition the chances of safety is always there if your this uh, beam is rigid if the beam is rigid then the value of ei is taken as infinity for rigid beam ei is taken as infinity if ei is taken as infinity r will become infinity if r will become infinity that it means that this beam will lie as it is that is equals to what horizontal it will be like this so it will not going to deflect so any horizontal line has any horizontal line has the center is where at infinity for horizontal line the center will lie at infinity so we are not interested on a material which has ei equals to what infinity but for any finite value do you have radius of curvature lower the value of m more will be the radius of curvature higher the value of e and i more will be the radius of curvature so we are interested in elastic nature this value of deflection delta and the value of theta they are very very small they are almost negligible quantity but do we have to do consider this value and we are interested to know this value so instead of delta if i mark this value equal to y then can we say theta is equal to dy by dx if we assign this axis equals to what x axis so is this value of y will be minus y and the slope of this dy by dx equal to theta as far as calculus is considered we have a definition of curvature of radius in calculus the radius of curvature r is given by d square y by dx square whole thing divided by 1 plus dy by dx square of this term to the power 3 by 2 that is the definition given by calculus so radius of curvature in time is defined as second order derivative of y with respect to x square plus the first order derivative square of it plus 1 to the power 3 by 2 now in practical situation is the value of theta here is very very small so what we assume is that theta is very very small if theta is small can we conclude dy by dx is also very small because dy by dx is equal to theta naturally the square of this quantity is again a small because it already small value and therefore is 1 plus dy by dx whole square is this value is approximately equals to 1 so denominator will be equals to 1 so is the radius of curvature itself equal to d square y by dx square so r is equals to d square y by dx square so we have a this formula that r equals to what ei divided by m and we have r equals to d square by dx square so we liquid this value equals to what ei divided by m so for this chapter we are governing equation equals to which is slight correction is there it's a 1 by r radius of curvature is 1 by r not this is it 1 by r. so 1 by r is this so what do you get for final equation 
1 by r is this, then this this value will be equals to m upon e i. So this value will be equals to m upon e i. So what is m? m equals to e i multiplied by d square y by d x square. And this one is moment about any section x. So what you do, you find out the first moment about any section x, multiplied by divide by e i and take two order second order derivative. Then you can find out the deflection. So if you try to solve this, what do you get? d square y by dx square is equal to m divided by e i. If you integrate one time, you will get dy by dx is equal to m integral of m divided by e i multiplied by dx plus certain constant of equation equal to what? c. And if you integrate one more time, I will get y, it's a double integral of m by e multiplied by dx plus c1 plus another constant equal to c2. So this is again multiplied by dx. M, this is double integral of m by e i dx plus c1 multiplied by dx plus c2. So is this value nothing but slope? So how many constant you required? One constant is c1 and one constant is c2. So minimum two boundary conditions are required. You have to develop two boundary conditions to solve this differential equation. Now to solve the, develop the boundary condition here at x equal to 0 is y is also equal to 0. That is the first boundary condition. And at this point your line is horizontal. So can we say that x equal to 0, your slope is 0. That is dy by dx equal to 0. So put this condition here, solve for c1, c2, you will get your equation for y and you can draw what is the deflection here. At this point, at this point, at x equal to 0 is y is equal to 0, use this condition and at this point at x equal to l, y is equal to 0 or at this point x equal to l by 2, theta means what, dy by dx equals to 0. So this is a double integration method. So you have to remember this equation. Okay, we assume the beam that is having a flange radius equal to what? Constant. In that case, equation 1 can be written as EI multiplied by d square y by dx square equals to and this is the bending moment at any section x. Now recall that we already developed the equation that dm by dx is equal to shear force and we already developed the derivative of shear force with respect to x is minus w. So if we differentiate the equation one more time, so if we differentiate this, it is d dx of ei multiplied by d square y by dx square. Will you get this term equal to dmx divided by dx? So this ei we are assuming constant, so we can take it outside. And will you get this one as dqy by dx cube equal to v? That is the shear force. And if we differentiate it one more time, we will get the value of minus w. So if we differentiate this term by ddx, I will get this term as ei multiplied by d cube y by dx cube is the derivative of dvx with respect to x. So ei multiplied by d to the power 4y by dx to the power 4 is equals to minus of w. So to obtain w, you have to take the fourth derivative. To obtain vx, you have to take the third derivative. To obtain the f, you have to take the second derivative. So we have SFD, then we have BMD, and then we have deflection curve. There are various methods available for deflection. Huh? One of the popular method is double integration method. That is, we have this governing equation. You, uh, you integrate one time, you will get dy by dx. You again integrate one more time, you will get y. And you can able to find out the value of deflection. But uh, we have to integrate this. First of all, we have to develop the equation for mx. Then we required constant c1. Then we required constant c2. So it's a very lengthy method. Second method we prefer is area moment method. It is also called as Morse method. In this one, we'll take the area of moment, area of bending moment. So area of bending moment, and from that we'll draw the conclusion from equation number one. So we'll discuss this later on. Then third method is strain energy method. Strain energy method is normally used for complex problem. This is an advanced method available for finding the deflection. It is also called as Castillogino theorem.
but we are not able to develop this method right now. Once we finish strain energy, we'll discuss this method. Then we have unit deflection method. Then we have conjugate beam method and many many methods. Out of that, we'll only going to focus area moment and the strain energy method.